All right, guys, thank you so much for this. Is, this will start our series. It actually happened, we kickstarted off last year. So what the Ambassador Tales is, is literally, we want to get to know you, who you are as ambassadors. If you have a business, what drove you, what motivated you? Do you have any tips, tricks? What are your books that you like, that you would recommend? And this serves us a way for when we do our ambassador meetings, not to just like, okay, good, ribbon cuttings, blah, 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 I'm out, network. This is so you get to know your peers. And you can network, get to know them, and see how you guys can co like, collaborate, colla uh, build community. So that's why we're here. So this series, we are bringing Charlie, and he is the owner of Dumpster Daddy. So I will go ahead and get on into it. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thank you. So he already got a chance to review the question, so let me go ahead and say. So my first is, how did the idea of your business come about? Um, the pandemic helped me uh, come up with the idea. I worked for Disney for 10 years, and when we always had to joke because we were in the operation, I was a leader, and the joke was the parks will never close. There's nothing that's ever going to shut down Walt Disney Park, and you always had job security. And then the pandemic happened, and Disney let me and my wife go. Well, she was my fiance at the time, it's such but a cute they let story. us go. <laughs> it's such a cute story. When I've heard about it, I was like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they let us go, and during the pandemic, during 2020, I had to dis make the decision on what I wanted to do. Uh, we decided to move to El Paso, and I had, um, me and the Lord, me and God had a talk. I said, uh, I got, I asked this lady to marry me. I'm not going back into the corporate world, so me and you going to have to figure it out. And so we moved to El Paso. Um, we used our savings to buy a truck and a trailer, and we've been going strong ever since. So I have two questions for you. Why El Paso, and then how did Dumpster Daddy's name come about? Everybody asks, always asks why El Paso. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, it's like, why El Paso? Because um, you, came, but you were in Florida, right? Yeah, I yeah. was in Florida. Uh, well, we had came to El Paso once when it was like 2017, 2018. Okay. And I visited her family. Um, I remember her, co her cousin, her older cousin, asked me his name, Junior. He said, would you move to El Paso? And at that time, I mean, I was still a younger man, so I was, I was loving Orlando. I was loving Florida, the hot weather, the beaches. I got beaches on each side of the coast. I wanted to ride out in Miami. It's only three and a half hours. Um, so that's, that's where my mind was. But um, when thinking about it, once the pandemic happened and Bianca said that uh, it's a good place to be, um, you can grow there. I said, I, I took a stronger consideration at coming here. And then not wanting to move back to Chicago, Oh, yeah, when we, cold. in 2020, uh, so we decided this was the best place for us to come. Good. And <laughs> if you don't know Charlie, Charlie does amazing videos. Like he has his, what is it, the 360? It takes yeah. great, he's great. He's a great, great content creator here. I'm just having fun. I, I like El Paso. It has given me the opportunity to explore and do some different things that I might not have tried if I stayed uh, working in Orlando. Right. Yeah. So how did Dumpster Daddy, like that's my other question. Um, Bianca has a childhood home here, and so it's full of, it was full of stuff. Uh, so she, well, it's, you know, her dad stuff and mom stuff. So we decided to, instead of, you know, hiring somebody else to come out, so she said, why don't we just buy a truck? We got the severance money from Disney. Let's figure out how to get a truck. So she has a Mustang, I have a car, and then we have a truck. So I was like, it's pointless to have three vehicles. There's only two of us. One of them, we have to figure out how to make some money with. So I figured that was a truck. So then I did an online search. I started looking at what you could do to make money with a truck, and a, a, just a pickup truck. So junk removal and moving came about. I'm not the most gentle of people, so moving was out the question for me. I can't be trusted to move somebody's stuff, valuables. Uh, so junk removal was a better fit for me because as a kid I used to like to tear up stuff anyway. So as an adult, that seems to work out better. That's good. <laughs> So you kind of answered my second question, which was, what was your key driving force to become an entrepreneur? I mean, you mentioned that Disney, did, was entrepreneur something that you had always kind of entertained, or is this something that Disney just kind of gave you that big push? So my father and my mother both, my, I saw my dad, he worked two jobs, plus he did a, he had his thing on the side, and he's mm -hmm. a minister. And then I saw my mom do basically the same thing. She worked one job, but then, you know, she had the job of, me, my brother, my right. sister, taking care of everything 
at the house and making sure everything ran. We got to places. So I saw how they worked in tandem when it came to making sure we got things done. And then together they had their own business. Mm. Out of high school, uh, I did go to college and then I dropped out. I went to work for my shoe boss. His name is Frank Claren. He told me, he said, how much you paying for school? Was you paying for school? And I told him, you know, how much a semester? He was like, so roughly you come out about 60 grand, 60 grand in student loan debt. He told me, he said, you stick with me, I'll give you my MBA. And so I worked with him for like three and a half years wow. selling women's shoes. And so he taught me how to give service. He taught me how to give top notch service. And he also showed me how to manage a business. And he did everything by hand. There was no computer. Only computer he had was a, a calculator that he would just, you would just see him looking at his, scroll through his stuff and just tally up everything. He did everything by hand. So he taught me that. And then going to Disney, just, I worked in the Magic Kingdom. So you see no less than 30,000 people a day. So that gives you the confidence to talk to people. So it was just trying to figure out what could I do to give El Paso a service. Wow, that's really neat. Can you guys hear me in the back? Just wanna make sure, okay, good. Mm -hmm. I had that issue last time, so. So beyond, besides Bianca, what motivates you? Because I know that was a big, you mentioned that in your previous speech that you had, you guys got engaged. Well, a big in motivator sometimes. She asked me that question too. And really, um, honestly, leaving a legacy. Right. Uh, once you, I mean, you work for a company like the Walt Disney World Company, and all they do is preach to you what Walt and his brother did. That's all you hear, what the Disney company did. Right. And you see, in the word of God, it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Mm -hmm. So when you work for a company like that, and you see that, oh man, somebody actually did. Mm -hmm. And not only his family's eating off of it, but I ate off of it. There's 70,000 other people that worked for the Walt Disney World Company that was eating off of his hard work and name. So coming out and coming to El Paso, I, I see an opportunity to mm -hmm. actually build a legacy here and i know matt has done a lot of work with you and he's raved about your your service so mm -hmm. if you really do need anybody he's your man to go to yeah <laughs> like he was but so what do you okay so this is a this is not on the questions that i asked you but what do you do with the junk removal like do you smash it like well, can, can, if we ever are frustrated can we just like all have it as an ambassador meeting and just like, <laughs> that frustration out what do they it? call those a, a smash house yeah the smash. the smash house um but items that can be donated we do donate okay. we donate to the assistance league of el paso here okay. they're our number one donation location so anybody who donates furniture so we do a lot of house clean outs uh recently we have had a lot of um my mom and dad we're dealing with it now with my grandmother like she doesn't she can, she's not at the house no more but she has china cabinets galore she has tables she got chairs clothes so a lot of people will call with in that situation mm -hmm. and then i will arrange time with the assistance league to make sure that once i get done at the house i'm just dropping off That's there really neat. Um, in the case of somebody just calling randomly like they need some trash gone or whatever that goes to the clint landfill and then i just did an estimate for a lady today and i don't know how she has it, but she had three refrigerators, two washers and dryers, a, comp a trash compactor, and uh, some other recycling, and all in her backyard. So that is, and I've, that goes to recycling. I was gonna say, I was like, I. So there's another program <laughs> called the uh, Neighborhood Leadership Academy, and I did not know that you can get cited. Mm -hmm. You can get like a, a, what do you call it, a ticket for ha like hoarding things. And they'll come in and there's just so much that they can do for themselves where mm -hmm. somebody else needs, like your services, needs to come in and Well, we need to talk about that because yeah. they need to know about me. I, need, <laughs> I know, I know. I've been needing to make, so I need to tell, tell Bianca about okay. that one. Yeah. All right. So we'll get in contact with that one. Uh, so the other one, what has been your most satisfying moment in business? The first time somebody called from my service other than a family member. <laughs> we, have we all have our first business, and that's great. You ch you cherish that moment uh -huh. <laughs> when it's so not somebody. You, you Bianca's know. auntie. She's like really big here uh, in her business, so she does construction. Her the, the, that part of her family. Yeah. Um, so when I told her what I wanted to do, she knew. Well, I guess she figured we weren't going to get much business off jump. So to keep us with some type of money coming in, she would have me come over and. Uh, cut down her trees, bushes, you know, sweep up stuff. And so that was good, but it was really a confident boost when I got 
the Facebook message. I remember it was a Facebook message that popped up and it said, hey, my mom needs help moving tree branches out of her house. Can you give her an estimate? And I wanted to put sidewalls on my truck. So I didn't care what it was. I, I knew I, I wanted two pairs of sidewalls. They were both $70 a piece. So whatever the job was, I knew I was charging $150. <laughs> there you go. So I should have charged her way more, but all I saw was I need sidewalls for my truck. I said, we'll get it done. It was a huge pile of, she, they had cut up a tree and all the branches, and I made it fit on that F-150 back. We was riding, you know, we was low riding, but <laughs> got it done. <laughs> and you got your, you got your It got side. my sidewalls, yes. <laughs> So, okay, so I asked you, like, what's your most satisfying? I'm going to kind of go off. What tips do you have for anybody who wants to, you know, is working a corporate job and wants to take that leap? Or how do you, what advice do you have to young business owners starting or thinking about starting a business? Um, what was the first question? So, like, what advice do you have of anybody who wants to leave corporate? Okay. and start their own business or anybody who just wants to randomly just start one? Well, I'm blessed because Bianca, she just got a job. She was working with ADP and now she has a job with Amazon. So she, you know, we have that, that uh, money coming in. Uh, me and my, my homeboy, he lives in Houston. Um, he wants to get into cooking. Uh, he works at Del Frisco's down there and I tell him all the time, I said, don't quit. Don't quit the job, bro. You got to have money coming in before you walk away to do, to, to do your thing. I, um, I said, so I would tell him like, before you leave Del Frisco's or any of your restaurant job, I said, you need to create a bunch of content and you need to give it all away for free. Just, just give it all away for free, all your best recipes, all that type of stuff. And he would say, no, I mean, I, I gotta charge people. I said, that's not how, that's not how the game is played anymore. Um, you, you gotta show value before people start spending money with you. You gotta show them that you have some type of, the offer that you're gonna offer them is worth more than what you know, they got in their pocket. Right. So I would tell you to stay at your job. Uh, if you're a young entrepreneur, uh, for me, I, I started when I was with Frank, my shoe boss, I started with him in high school, so it was like, I was like 16, 17 years old. Uh, when I went away to school, came back, I went away to school for like two years, came back, I, the story that I told you about him, um, but it was just like sitting up underneath someone who has experience, who has, who's doing what you want to do. I didn't know that I was going to try to go out and do my own thing, but all of the knowledge that I gained from him, seeing the hard work that it takes because being an entrepreneur, being your own business owner, and then trying to do the content creation, and the content creation is all about driving to my business, like instead of paying for ads and all that type of stuff is to filter it's organic yes it's 100 percent organic exactly. you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and for anybody just like a shameless not a plug but people are going to TikTok. i mean that's why it's called book talk and like teacher talk or whatever you want to insert name of whatever you're looking for your obsession here when you go to these social medias you're actually looking for information it's the same thing like with pinterest it's like another version of um the internet just with pictures and TikTok is like oh hacks how do you do this I've heard so many people find interesting ways that they've evolved their lives or made their lives easier just by going it if you provide that service why is life insurance so important why is notary why is it different than a notario publico you're informing people about what your services are and you keep feeding them it's like getting them hooked it's like okay what more and then you get them to like convert so if you're not doing content creation or just educating your audience, it's very crucial because that's how you're going to get people to come in into your business. You just got to educate them. So I think you're doing great yeah. by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one book. Yeah so, yeah, so the next question is, let me go here. So what business-related books have inspired you the most and what is your favorite book? So I got three books, same author. <laughs> <laughs> Go for His it. name is Daniel Priestley, and I wrote, I got him here. Key personal influence, oversubscribe, and entrepreneur revolution. So in 2017, I remember having the idea, like the internet was starting to blow up, uh, YouTube was blowing up, Instagram, Facebook, everybody's doing their 
And I had the idea of like, you know, displaying my life or whatever was going on with me at that time. And then these books, the, and he, I think he wrote the first one in 2013, uh, Key Personal Influence, talks about being um, an expert in whatever field you're in so that when people think of, you know, employing people, they, they think of Eddie. You know, when they think of insurance, they think of Alex. When they think of junk removal, hopefully. <laughs> they think of me. <laughs> they know you. They'll think of you. <laughs> so that's called Key Personal Influence. And then Oversubscribed is uh, when you read that book, he's going to talk about being in every uh, platform. So being in written content, being in video content, being in um, uh, blogs, having your website, like all of that type of stuff, just being oversubscribed. So when once again, when people punch in or into Google or whatever search engine they're using, yeah you will pop up for that particular niche. It, what you're saying is like basically become SEO in yourself. Yes. So you're doing it on a very human level. As, and the other one is creating content as much to build your SEO. So when people are searching for that, they come, you come yes, up. Yes, you okay. come up. And then the third book, and you can all probably tie them all together. It's called, the, and I haven't finished it yet, so I don't know it all, but it's The Entrepreneurial Revolution. And that's basically becoming like, you're, uh, he calls it a small, you're a small global business because we can all tap into different resources that before the age of the internet, you would have to go to China to, to go look at manufacturing if you wanted to be in clothing, all of that type of stuff. So now you can do everything from your phone. So in that book, he talks about being a global small business, having a global presence, but still being a small business. Right. So all three of those books have, is, I read the first one probably the first of the year. And that one was the, uh, sorry, Key Person to Influence. And that's, I took what he's been, what, what he wrote in that book, and I've been applying that. That's what you've been noticing. I've been applying that to the social media world. That's really great. I appreciate somebody who can take that and turn being an influencer really correctly. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I mean, in today's world, when you, if you're going to put something out there on the internet, if you're going to, put yourself out there, then you got to be who you say you are. Right. And if you're not who you say you are, then people will find out. And then everything that you, you built, it's going to come out the window. It's going to go away. So. so this is where we open it up to the public. If you guys have any questions for Charlie, um, anything that you want to have, add comments, anything like that, we open it up to you all. How many other companies? Uh, last time I counted, it was forty-nine fifty. Small, small businesses like me, okay. truck and trailer, maybe a truck. Um, there's probably more because it's, if if you have a truck or you have a way to get stuff, it's a small barrier of entry. You can go out. You can actually go to Enterprise and rent a pickup or a box truck and do what I do. So. And yeah. how much do you have to pay when you get to the Clint dump? What's that fee? So they have, uh, their fee is $26 per ton. That seems to be pretty regular for the Texas area. Uh, in other areas of the country, it could be way more. So we are blessed here to not have such, I guess it's because there's so much land here that they don't charge that much per ton. In California, they, they're charging 180 per ton to dump. So um, when, when being competitive here, what I saw in El Paso with starting a junk removal business, when I came here, there was only two franchises, is the junk luggers and two men in a truck. Two men in a truck are primarily a moving company. Uh, so when, you, when I looked at the landscape here and trying to make a mark and, and build a brand, I, I figured that uh, with only one franchise being here, it would be time because I think El Paso is, is, is growing. I saw the same thing happen when I lived in Orlando. Orlando was really small it felt bigger because of the surrounding theme parks and everything but orlando the city itself was very small then all of a sudden you just start you, you first started seeing all of the roads being fixed construction widening the the highways uh adding lanes to i-4 uh tollways all of that stuff and then last time when we went back everything was done i was there with the construction everything was done and it, it was it was beautiful <laughs> I mean, that's a whole yeah. So I don't know. I just, to, I just, text, I think. yeah, I just feel that. Yeah. 
So with, when I say with it growing here, I think that more franchises will be coming. And by the time they get here, I want like two, two, two men in the truck said they moving, but the real big guys like Junk King, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, they're not here yet. So by the time they get here, I want to be already established. And or if we built something that they look like they might want to take interest in purchasing, you know, we're, I'm trying to build a value, build value in the, in my brand. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else? But so um, you guys doing a great job establishing the brand, you know, on different you know, social media platforms and all that. Um, as your business grows, would you ever think about franchising if you are just like committed to a big enough size? Uh, if we could come up with a model, so uh, we just made the investment, and because of the chamber, we uh, bought bought a website from Hello Amigo. And I wouldn't have probably did that if I hadn't have saw them do a presentation here on their company. And I told my wife, I said, we were using GoDaddy, and I told her, I said, uh, if we're gonna build an asset for people, somebody like a bigger company to wanna come in and take us seriously, instead of renting space on the internet, we would have to buy real estate <coughs> on the internet. So that was the, the, one of the first parts that we did. So. I'm enjoying having the freedom of being small so I can move how I want to move. Like my wife, her sister wants us to come to New York to help her with jump off her business, her clothing line. So, you know, I'm worried about getting too big to where I can't move how I want. But the franchise model is something that I am preparing for, but I'm just I'm moving at a snail's pace. <laughs> well, with, if we don't have any more questions, I think that will conclude um this month and this yeah this month's series of our ambassador tales with charlie dumpster daddy thank you so yeah thank Appreciate you guys for, <laughs> thank you for everything. yes